Welcome to St Andrew's Family Time. I'm Nikki from St Andrew's Church in St Helens. This is the second in a series of episodes about Jesus's miracles. In today's episode, I've got a fun activity for you to do. Nick has a story to share about the officer's son. Anna will share some questions to get you all talking. And Jean has a creative way to pray. Remember, you can pause the video anytime and do an activity, or you can watch it all the way through and then do the activities afterwards. Now for an activity. Now, you're discovering today's story that Jesus healed an officer's son, and he did it without touching him. And we're gonna set you a challenge now to see if you can get an object from one side of the room to the other without touching it. Hmm, here. How do we do that, I hear you say? Well, if you get a ball or a teddy, or I've got a fluffy hedgehog here that's like a ball or a balloon, you could perhaps try um, balancing it on your head like this. You might try on your own, or you might try working together as a team. Now, I'm on my own, so I would have struggled with that, but uh, working together as a team, but you'll be all together and you'll be able to go. You could be trying to move an object in your elbow or between your elbows from one to the other like this, or you could try putting it between your legs, in your knees, um, Getting across the other room with to the other side with out touching it with your hands. Hmm, I wonder if you can have a go. I bet you'll have a lot of fun. Now, here's Nick with today's story so you can find out a little bit more about how Jesus healed the officer's son. Something can shine. But you can't really see it if it's blocked out by a dark cloud. Something can shine, but you can't see it if your eyes are shut. Something can shine, but you can't really see anything if it's as bright as the midday sun. Today's story is from John's Gospel. And John tells us that in Jesus, God became a human being and lived on earth. In Jesus, God bathed the world in kindness and truth. In Jesus, God's glory shone brightly, but it didn't blind us. John's gospel tells us about the miracles Jesus did so people would know what God is like. John's gospel tells us about the miracles Jesus did so people would believe and trust in him. John's gospel tells us about the miracles Jesus did, so people could have life in all its fullness. Now, the miracles Jesus did were like signs. Do you remember the story from last time, from John chapter 2? Jesus was at a wedding. The wine ran out. His mum asked him to help, and Jesus turned water into wine. His kindness and power shone brightly, and his followers believed in him. That was the first miracle that Jesus did in John's Gospel. But Jesus did other miracles too. Here's the story of the second miracle, which you can find in John's chapter 4, verses 43 to 54. Jesus went. Jesus went on a trip to Jerusalem. Jesus went to celebrate the Jewish Passover festival and the things he did and the things he talked caused quite a stir. Then Jesus came home. Jesus came home to Galilee. Jesus came home to Galilee. And the people welcomed and cheered as if he was their hero. Jesus went. Jesus went to Cana, a village in the hills of Galilee. Jesus went to Cana, where he had turned water into wine. 
Perhaps he had friends there. Perhaps he liked to get away from the busy lakeside. We don't know exactly why, but we know that's where he went. One of the king's officers came to Cana. One of the king's officers came from Capernaum all the way up to Cana. One of the king's officers came all the way from Capernaum to Cana to find Jesus because he had heard about Jesus' miracles. The king's officer went. The king's officer went to Jesus. The king's officer went right up to Jesus and begged him to heal his son, who was very ill, his son, who was dying. This officer asked Jesus to come. This officer asked Jesus to come down to Capernaum. This officer begged Jesus to come down to Capernaum to heal his son. Sir, please come before my child dies, he said to Jesus. But Jesus said, go. Jesus said to the officer, go, your son will live. Jesus said to the officer, go and your son will live. And that man believed what Jesus told him, that his son would live. So the man went. The man went home the very next day. The man went home all the way from Cana to Capernaum. And on the way, he met some of his servants. The man's servants had come. The man's servants had come to tell him the news. The man's servants had come to tell him the good news. Your son is alive and well. The fever went. The fever that had made the boy ill, it went. The fever that was killing that boy, it went. At 1 p.m., the exact time that Jesus had said, go, your son will live. So the man believed in Jesus. His family believed in Jesus. His servants believed in Jesus. All the people of his house believed in Jesus, who had healed and gave life to his son. And that was the second miracle that Jesus did. The second miraculous sign. I wonder where that sign is pointing. And I wonder if you will follow it. Thanks, Nick. What an amazing story. There are so mo many miracles in the Bible where we see Jesus reach out and touch somebody to heal them. The official must have heard all those stories about what Jesus had done and perhaps thought he was going to do the same for him and his son. But Jesus didn't do that, did he? He sent the officer away and the officer had to trust Jesus that he would be able to heal him even though Jesus didn't come. He had to have a lot of faith. The official came to Jesus for that help and he had to go even and had to have even more to go home and to believe that Jesus had performed the miracle making his son well and the man the the officer would have walked about 16 miles from Capernaum to Cana. Now it's over to Anna who has a few questions for us to get us talking. How do you think the official felt when Jesus said, go, your son will live? Can you think of the time you had to trust in God 
even when you couldn't see him at work. I wonder if there is someone you want to ask Jesus to help or to heal. Thanks, Anna. Why not pause the video now and talk about these things? Now over to Jean, who has a creative way for us to pray. We've heard the story of how Jesus healed the official son. So I'm going to show you a creative prayer heart to remind you to pray for people you know who are sick. Here's mine. Now, you can use either coloured paper or coloured card. And to draw a heart shape, it's often easier to make it symmetrical, to fold a piece of paper in half. And I've got one here. So just fold the paper in half. And then if you just draw half a heart shape on it, if you cut it out, is your heart shape. Now, you get a fold down the middle. If you don't want that fold down the middle, you might want to use that as a template and put it on another piece of paper and draw around it and cut it out. If you want to make it another colour underneath like mine, what you would need to do is get another piece of paper, just like you did the other one, fold it in half and then hold your templates that you've already cut out and then draw a bigger half heart shape round it and then you just stick them together like I've done. I've decorated mine with some sticky uh, circles round and then I've put the words Jesus heals. I've actually wrote mine on white paper and cut it out but you could just write yours on. Now I've cut some heart shapes out, smaller ones, exactly the same as I did the larger ones and you could write the name of someone you want to pray for or you might want to draw a picture of them or you could put a photograph of them in. Now I've used these hearts rather than just writing on the heart itself because if the person gets better I can take it off and then because I've used double-sided sellotape and then I could stick another heart on for someone else I know and finally I've just stuck some ribbon or taped some ribbon at the back so you can hang, hang it up to remind you of the people you want to pray for who are sick. Shall we pray now? Dear God, thank you for the story of the official son, which reminds us that you care for everyone. Help us to have faith and trust in you like the official in the story. Even when we cannot see you at work or when we do not feel you nearby, help us to remember that you can perform miracles. We pray for all those who have family members that are ill at this time. May you be their comfort. Give them strength and faith to trust in you and to bring their own families to you in prayer. Amen. Thanks, Jean. Well, that's all we have time for today. We'd love to hear from you and see what you've been making and drawing. You can message us via the St Andrew's Denton's Green Facebook page or post something in one of our WhatsApp groups. Look out for another episode of St Andrew's Family Time next week. And why not subscribe to the YouTube channel, channel to get notifications of each new video. See you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye.